So you want to box and gym is closed and you don't have anyone you can punch. Well, I'm Sir Fancy and I can teach you how to do all that in VR. Or how to do that for other people. You don't need to play on our games. I don't do it. Let me show you how it looks like. Alright, so really simply you can see that we have some kind of boxing bag. You can punch it, do whatever you want with it. But if you want to be the real game, you can punch this object. And once it will be punched, it will change color and move. Alright, move it. Cover. Etc. Etc. And if it will actually punch your head, it will for you only print some string and tell you that you were a hit, but you can program it to do whatever you want. Alright, so as always I'm starting in VR template from Unreal Engine and we will start by creating new actor, blueprint actor, and let's call it boxing thing. It's called back, I think. I'm not really sure. Doesn't matter <laughs> right now. And we will add here a component, it will be cube. And let's scale it down a little bit and move it up. And the other thing will be, of course, something we can actually punch. So I would go with cylinder because that uh, will actually look like something you could punch. So let's scale it and make it look like a regular boxing bag. Just like that, that should be pretty fine. Oh, let's actually not over let those objects overlap. So move it down, something like this. You can of course use your own meshes and make it look just nice and beautiful, but that's not necessarily what I am going for right now. So open that boxing thing again. And what we will do is to add here component. Uh, no, of course, of course, add here component and that will be physics constraint, right? And first of all, uh, let's make sure that it's under default scene root and let's name this before. So variable name of this cube will be actually, let's call it base and the cylinder will be boxing back, boxing back. Okay, compile and let's go into physics constraint. And now what we can do is to uh, set up these components, uh, component of these constraints. So first one will be the base and the second one should be boxing back. All right, compile and that should be just fine. And another thing is if you click on that boxing back, make sure that you simulate here physics because otherwise it wouldn't simply work. Then again, click on physics constraint and make sure that you disable collisions on it set it to true and the other thing let's go to angular limits you know what let's like it. let's leave it unlocked right now just to see what it does but if you already know how physics constraints work you can set up these limits okay so let's test it all right here in vr i can just go through it with my hands but if i put it into fist and punch you can see that it's weirdly moving all right that's definitely not moving how i meant it to move but we will fix that in a moment and first thing you will do is to take this physics constraint and move it way up here because that should work as our pivot point. Let's say that about here, which means that from this point it will rotate where we need. So right now if you would punch it, it would go all around. So let's click on that physics constraint still and set that limit motion. And now you need to know which are these movement, which of these movements you have to use. And I don't know that, so I will say that uh, we should use swing 1 and swing 2 let's limit it for those 45 for now and locked twist movement but let's see if uh, it should work or oh, we will see All right now if you punch it you can see that it's moving sort of and it's moving like a crazy which is quite all right and i am pretty sure that we have locked the wrong axis because i can't punch it to the side if uh, you think it's uh, not swinging enough, you can of course increase, okay, you can see it, now you can see it. You can of course increase this swing limit one to swing limit two. I would actually do it, let's put it on 60. And you can go as well as 90 or 360 if you want like that back to be punching you from back of your head. Da -da -da, set this one to limited and this one to locked. And again set it to 90 degree. And now look at that, I can punch it and it actually feels like a regular boxing bag. And the faster I punch it, the more it will of course go and faster it will go, come back. So you can use it, but this is kind of boring, right? 
All right, that's actually kind of boring. We we still have this thing, whatever it is, boxing fast stuff thing. But let's make sure that we have actually something to hit. So if you want to have something to hit, you need to press the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. Then it will appear. Okay, I uh, was just joking, of course. Let's get into boxing thing. And uh, once you press that like button, you can go to add component and add here. Well, let's go with sphere. Of course, fastest would be collision, but I actually don't want to use collision this time around because I want to play with uh, colors as well. So let's uh, rename it, of course. Let's call it uh, punch, whatever. Well, I don't know why punch, probably because you are punching it. I don't know. I should really work on those names. I know I am telling that to myself every single time. And let's make sure it's under boxing back. All right. And scale it down. Make sure that it's locked so it has still all dimensions same. And move it somewhere. All right, that looks cool. Something like that. And let's see where it is. All oh, right here. Let's actually put it right here because I don't really want to move that much. All right, now when you have it posted here, let's make sure it's set to not block all dynamic, but overlap all. And now if you move it, it should move with it. Well, that's, that's perfect. So now what we will do is to scroll it uh, somewhere here and there should be generate overlap events and it's already actually set in, set on, which is great. So let's scroll down and set it to on component begin overlap. And we will cast to motion controller. Uh, how is it called? Motion. Is it BP motion controller? Let me quickly check it. You can check it in virtual reality BP blueprints. And here it is. That's basically that hand you have. Oh, BP motion controller. Da -da -da, that's fine. Everything is cool. And da -da -da. Uh, let's connect objects to other actor, not other composition. And let's do here one more thing. There should be on component begin and overlap. And let's just leave it here for now. We will need it later. So now what we want to do is to just test it. So once you will hit it, let's let's print string. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, that you can use print string to test and debug almost everything. And if I punch it, you can see it's moving with it. And if I punch this part, you can see probably much better on the screen than I hear that it created the text, which is just what I wanted. All right. So now what we will do is to make sure that you hit it. So the, well, wait a minute. We already have that. So <laughs> what we will do is to make it do something once you hit it. So for that, we will create here a few arrows and uh, attach them to boxing back as well. You don't necessarily need to use arrows, but I like to play with them. I'll make sure that they are pretty much first one. Let's set to same coordinates as this one. So let's just copy location from this. Well, let's actually move it a little bit here on the red axis, which means X, just to be able to see it. And what we will do now is to actually copy it and make sure it's on. Okay, we can't copy it, it would create bugs, so let's uh, duplicate it. That should work, yep. And let's just move it somewhere else. Let's put one here. That's cool. Another one. Stop using Ctrl C, Ctrl V because it obviously doesn't work. So let's duplicate it and move it somewhere else, for example, here. Try to not adjust uh, other axis than uh, the blue one, Z, Z or Z, Z, wherever we are from. <laughs> and try to not adjust other axis than uh, that Z too much. So now we have a few of them. So what we will do once you will punch that, which means that it will overlap. We want it to move. So let's set to move component to. Component will be our punch. And let's say that it will take 0 0.5 seconds. And now we need to get from somewhere relative and target rotation. For that, we will take our arrows. 
right here. Make it make array out of it. So make array. Create four pins. From there we will get a copy. Uh, which copy is uh, the trick? We will set it to random integer in range. Range will be 0 to 3, which means that it will randomly choose one of these arrows. And from that, we will simply take those coordinates. So it should move between them. So what we will do from here is here get relative location, connect it right here. And from punch, because we don't want to change rotation, we will get relative rotation and connect it right here and just to make sure that uh, it works we will start by adding here begin play uh, event begin play and simulate it so we just see it actually does work so let's simulate it i can see it moved somewhere and i haven't put there uh, loop so we don't clearly see it. Let's okay, put here short delay just to make sure it works and connect it right here. Okay, and you can see that it does exactly what we wanted. It will randomly choose one of these three arrows and then it will move that box where we need. Now you can actually tell the player where he should punch it. So uh, let's delete all this, we don't need it. And now what we will do here is to do, move it all up and actually thought that it was a bit too fast. So let's set it to 0 0.8. Okay, move all this somewhere where it won't look that weirdly. <laughs> uh, let's put it here, for example. Da -da -da. And what to do with this event of and overlap? And that's simply we need to actually make sure that once uh, you will cast it, you won't be able to hit it until it will change. So what we will do is to set here do once, and we will reset it once overlap will end. Okay, that should do the trick. And let's test it out. Alright, let me stand here. Hopefully I won't punch my table again. And I can just punch this one. It will move. And you can see that it's changing it based on when I punch it. Alright, but if this was everything, it would be still kind of boring. So what we will do is to make it change color once you will punch it. Or actually it will have one color when it will be punchable and it won't have other color when it won't be punchable. That didn't make sense, it will make sense in a moment. What we will do is to create here new material. Call it M, which, is, which means emissive. And simply put here constant. If you are not new on this channel, you know very well that emissions are best materials I use for everything simply because I'm not using any other material. <laughs> Once you have this constant, let's make sure that you convert it to parameter because we will use instances. Call it color. And from here we will take it and add here multiply. Set it to 30. Let's go with 30 and connect it to emissive color. All right, that's fine. And you know what, basically let's leave to red. Now that it mattered that much. Apply. All right, now click on that M and make sure that you create material instance. We will create two of them. One will be called red. Uh, and another one will be called green. Oh, no, don't do that. And call it green. And just simply open it. And because we have converted it into material before, let's make sure it's enabled. And we can change the, which one is, yeah, this one is green. So let's make sure that it's set to green. Uh, save this one right here. And red one, let's make sure it's better red than this one. This is kind of weird, right? Save it. And wait a minute, it will compile itself. So now let's open boxing thing. And let's say that once 
it will be once it will be green you are allowed to punch it and when it will be red you shouldn't punch it so let's set it to green because from the start you can punch it it will glow just like that and let's go back here into cast motion control and first thing we will do is to set it to some other color because once you punch it you want it to be red for a while, for a bit and once it will move to final location it can be green again so after do once let's uh, take first of all take this punch set material index is uh, zero if you aren't sure make sure to look here it's material element zero which means zero and it's set to green and we want to send it to red right and put it right here now move it and once this will be completed which means after 0 0.8 seconds we want to set it back to green which means you can punch it again as a sign to player so compile and I think that we are pretty much done all right that looks actually really cool look at that and you can still cover with you with your hands if you put them into hold and that pack will come at you you can use them as cover so now yeah, well, let's make sure actually that we feel the pain so what we will try is go into blueprint blueprint motion controller pawn and add here collision uh, sphere collision and make sure it's on around your head maybe a little bit bigger you can play with this pile and make sure it's attached to it and set here on component begin overlap and we will cast to boxing thing cast to boxing thing set it to other actor and just to test it let's use print so print string okay this is nothing and if i punch it properly and it will hit me you can see that it works just fine I make need to make sure that that collision isn't too big or too small and you can actually just move your head and it shouldn't punch you oh it actually did this time i have probably too big collision but it doesn't matter all right and i think that and i think that i will end this uh, with it because uh, you can set end to this however you want if this is just a mini game you can you can just restart that mini game once he will be hit or do whatever you want it's all up to you well that's everything for this tutorial i hope that you learned something that you now can properly punch boxing thing because that's what this tutorial was actually about I have a Patreon, if I helped you really a lot, you can join it in some way and get the project files for this uh, for this or uh, other things that are there. We also have a Discord channel that you can join if you want. We, we talk there a lot about VR game development or just game development overall. And that's about it. So fancy 